Today's video, I will be taking a look at the 2022 runoff election in the state of Georgia that will be held on December the 6th of this year between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. Now, we've been here before. Just about one, close to two years ago, there was a runoff in this state and Raphael Warnock came on top of Kelly Loeffler and John Ossoff, the other senator in the state of Georgia, also defeated incumbent David Perdue. So, again, both candidates were not at 50%. And because Georgia had Jim Crow laws, that, that basically forced a 50% for a candidate to win. This is exactly what's happening in this race. Now, Warnock did win by about 40,000 votes in the first round against Herschel Walker. But it was kind of expected that but neither candidate will actually get to 50%. So... There is this runoff election. Now there was a third party candidate called Chase Oliver who took away 2.07% of the vote. Now libertarian candidates are typically um, more supported throughout the more Republican wing. So typically the libertarians vote could go to the Republican party. But there are problems with the Republicans. For example, um, unlike last election, this election the Senate is not actually at stake. Democrats have already been projected the winner of the 2022 United States Senate. So many people that would simply vote for Herschel Walker for because of the recent Senate control may not actually come out to vote. And Libertarians, in the last election, we were talking about Libertarians probably backing the Republican Party candidate, which was David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler. However, to the contrast, um, it was rather that the Libertarians ended up backing the Democrat, or it was that many uh, some voters that voted for the Republicans simply did not want to turn out. Regardless, it was not that great for the Republican Party in this race. So if we look at um, one of the current predictions by race to the White House here, you can see that they have a uh, the Democrat Raphael Warnock at a 80% chan chance to win, which is really impressive against Herschel Walker's 19.5% chance. The projected margin is D plus 3.8, and the race rating is lean Democrat. And I do think that they are slightly generous to Raphael um, to her. To Raphael Warnock, I don't think he's going to get 51.9%, but basically looking at many of these races here, in this election, I did obviously overestimate the Republican Party, so you do have to take that into consideration as well. And if we just look at this race here, this was exactly what happened in 2021. Except this time, the Democrats are actually ahead in the round one, which is just not good for Herschel Walker or the Republican Party. Now, Republicans definitely have a certain amount of hope. The first thing is that this race is really anybody's race. Republicans could, tech could actually turn out if they wanted to and vote in Herschel Walker. But again, turnout is probably not going to be that high, and that is a good thing for the Republican Party. Republicans typically don't do that well in high turnout elections. The 2021 runoff was an extremely high turnout election, and Republicans didn't do well. And this race, the turnout is expected to be low. However, the low turnout, again, in this particular race, looks like is actually helping the Democrats. In the end, we'll have to wait and see. And if you look at the 2020 Senate election results, in the Georgia special election, the Republican combined vote was 49.7% in the first round, mostly split between Kelly Loeffler and Doug Collins, while Raphael Warnock and the Democratic vote was 487 so they were one point behind of the Republican Party. But they ended up pulling it on top. Similarly, in the state of Georgia, the regular election, David Perdue lost to John Ossoff, despite actually getting 49.7% of the vote in the first round, and nearly, really not, nearly achieving the fact that the prime, the runoff may not have happened had David Perdue got 10,000 more votes in the state of Georgia. And just looking at finally my prediction, what 
am I necessarily expecting? Well, this is the county map. I shifted many of these counties. I'm just going to move the screen here. I shifted some of these suburban counties to Democrats. Democrats are probably going to do pretty well in some of these suburban counties. And I think that some of the exurbs will also shift to the Democratic Party compared to their 2020 election results. As a fact of that, the Democratic margin would be, in my projection, 1.43%. Now, many people have this around the ballpark of this margin, about 1-2 to two point margin for the Democrats. And I do agree. Looking at some of the current news, looking at the fact that Trump has already announced a 2020 for election bid, it does not really look that great for the Republicans, but Republicans certainly still have hope. They can still turn this around. There are still um, 12 days left between before the election. Republicans can certainly make up this gap, but things are just not going that well for them. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.